ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت باركت على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما the heroes of islam the heroes of islam اولئك اصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أبر هذه الأمة قلوبا وأعمقها علما وأكلها وأقلها تكلفا قوما اختارهم الله لصحبة نبيه ونصرة دينه فاعرف لهم فضلهم واتبعهم في آثارهم فإنهم والله لقد كانوا على هدى صراط مستقيم Those are the companions of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the best of this ummah in the most pious of hearts and the most deep in the, in the knowledge of Islam and the least people in making things difficult. A people whom Allah chose to be the friends and the companions and the helpers and the aid and the supporters of his prophet and to aid this religion. فَعْرِفْ لَهُمْ فَضْلَهُمْ So know, get to know their excellence and follow their way. Because wallahi, they were upon the right straight path. Ikhwani fillah, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters. Let's not forget the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Al-mar'u ma'a man ahab. Everyone shall be with those whom he loves. Everyone shall be with those whom he loves. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Whoever resembles, imitates, follows, copies a people, he will be with them. Those are the best. But how can we get to love them? How can we get to imitate them if we don't know their excellence? That is why in this series of these khutbas, inshallah, we'll be mentioning the fadail, the excellences, and the manaqib, the virtues of these great people. Just some of them so that we can get to know them and to honor them and respect them and follow them and love them hoping that inshallah that love we have that love in our hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us and have mercy on us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us and make us enter into paradise just because of that love we have for the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and no one comes close to abu bakr siddiq رضي الله عنه عبد الله ابن عثمان that's his name his father used to be known as Abu Quhafa his real name is Uthman عبد الله ابن عثمان كان رجل أبيض نحيف طويل he used to be someone who was light skinned and he was tall and he was very slim خفيف اللحية. His beard was not so thick. وكان كثير البكاء عندما يتلو القرآن. And he used to cry a lot when he used to read the Quran. سيد من سادات القريش. He is a master, the chief from the chiefs of Quraysh. سيد في الجاهلية قبل الإسلام. He used to be someone honorable before Islam in جاهلية. ما 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 عبد صنع من قط. He never worshipped the idols. وَمَا شَرِبَ الْخَمْرَ And he never drank alcohol. وَمَا أَكَلَ الْرِبَى And he never went into riba when the whole society was corrupt. 
That is why he used to be one of the closest friends of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even before the Prophet was a Prophet, before Islam. The first man to accept Islam. And that is enough of an excellence. The first person, the first man outside the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to accept Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, مَا عَرَبْتُ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا كَانَ مِنْهُ كَوَّةٌ وَتَرَدُّدٌ when I used to call people to Islam, when Islam was strange, and you think, anyone I brought Islam to him, he always used to have second thoughts. He always used to waver. Illa Abu Bakrin, except Abu Bakr. The first time I told him about Islam, Sadaqani wa Amanabi, he accepted me and he believed in me. Except Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr as Siddiq. The first person to accept Islam. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, to show how close he used to be to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, Taqul, Lam aqil illa wa abawiyya ala deeni. Since I grew up and I have my mind, I have seen my parents, they were upon Islam. وَلَمْ يَأْتِي لَنَا يَوْمًا إِلَّا كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ سَلَّمْ يَزُورُنَا تَرَفِ النَّهَارِ بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّةً And every single day, there would be no day except that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would visit us in our house in the morning and the evening. This shows you how close they were. Most of us have been friends for 5, 10, 15 years maybe. You have never invited him or her into your house. This is how close Abu Bakr was to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No other Sahaba was this close. Two times a day he has to go to his house. Radiallahu anhu. That is why like we mentioned here before, the hadith of Abu Darda, when he said, Kuntu jalisan ma'an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day I was sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fa'aqbala Abu Bakrin akhidh bitaraf izari. Then we saw Abu Bakr approaching and he was holding his cloth to the point that his knees could be seen. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw him, because he, know his, he knows his friends so well, even from afar, he said to the Sahaba who was sitting with him, Amma inna sahibakum faqad Your friend was coming, he has been in a problem. فَجَاءَ فَسَلَّمْ When Abu Bakr came, he gave the salam. ثُمَّ قَالْ Then he said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ قَدْ كَانَ بَيْنُ بْنَ الْخَطَّابِ شَيْئًا فَأَسْرَعْتُ إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ نَدِمْتْ There was something which happened between me and Umar. I was with Umar. Then something happened and I said something which was not good. ثُمَّ نَدِمْتْ Then I regretted that. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ اغْفِرْ لِي So I said to Umar, forgive me. فَأَبَابَتْ Umar he refused. So I have come to you. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, يَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لَكَ يَا أَبَى بَكْرِ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لَكَ يَا أَبَى بَكْرِ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكَ يَا أَبَى بَكْرِ May Allah forgive you, Abu Bakr, three times. And that is better. ثُمَّ عُمَرْ نَدِمْ Then on the other side, Umar, he regretted. Why didn't he forgive his friend? So he went to the house of Abu Bakr. أَثَمَّ أَبَى بَكْرٍ Did Abu Bakr come here? They said, La. So Umar, he knows. There's nowhere else he would go except to his best friend, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Darda, he said, Falamma aqbala Umar, when Umar was approaching, Tama'ara wajhu Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grew so red because of the anger he had. His face became so red of the anger he had. Until to the point Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ashfaqa ala Umar. He felt bad for Umar what is going to happen to Umar. Fajatha ala rukbatayhi. So he went down on his knees, Abu Bakr. And he said, Wallah, ya Rasulullah, inni kuntu adhlam. Inni kuntu adhlam. Ya Rasulullah, I was the one who was wrong. I was the one who was wrong. Faqal al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said when Umar came, Inna Allah qad ba'athani ilaykum. 
فقلتم كذبت وقال أبو بكر صدق صدق Allah sent me to you and all of you said you're a liar Abu Bakr is the only one who said you are truthful وواساني بمانه ونفسه and he gave me all of himself and his wealth فهل أنتم تاركوا لي صاحبي then won't you leave for me my friend Abu Dhar said فما أوذي بعد يومي هذا after that day no one harmed Abu Bakr again يا إخوان the point here is if Umar, radiallahu anhu, the second best man, this is how the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sees him in Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is defending him. He is the one who is defending him. That shows you how great this person was. Radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr, a siddiq, like the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is saying in this hadith, no one gave his wealth more than Abu Bakr. No one. He gave his wealth more than Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, it is enough for him an excellence that he is the one he used to buy the slaves who used to being tortured. Those Muslims were still slaves. He used to give his money. That's why Umar, radiallahu anhu, used to say, Abu Bakr sayyiduna wa a'taqa sayyidana Bilal. Abu Bakr is our master and he let free our master Bilal. Abu Bakr is the one who purchased Bilal and let him free. We all know the story of Bilal, how he used to be persecuted in the hot desert. Radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, a'alamu ashab al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the most knowledgeable of all the sahaba. Period. No one has more knowledge than Abu Bakr. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, he says, as in the hadith in the sahih, he says, Jalas al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala member. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to the member, Fakal and he said, Abdun khayyarahullahu bayna zaharati dunya wa ma'indah. Fakhtara ma'indallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said on the member and he said, There's a person, Allah has given him the choice either to give him the pleasures and the delights of the world or that he goes and gets what's with Allah. So he chose what's with Allah. فَوَكَى أَبُوْ بَكْرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Abu Bakr started to cry. وَبَكَى وَبَكَى and he started to cry a lot. وَهُوَ يَقُولْ بِأَبِي أَنْتَ وَأُمِّ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ May my father and my mother be ransomed for you, Ya Rasulullah. Abu Sa'id and Sa'ad, they said, فَقُلْنَا يَرْحَمُ اللَّهُ الشَّيْخِ We said, may Allah have mercy on this sheikh. The Prophet ﷺ is mentioning someone, Allah gave him a choice. Why is he crying? Then they knew after when the Prophet ﷺ passed away that Abu Bakr, he understood, none of them understood that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about himself, his death was coming. He was the one who was given that choice. Either to stay with them or to go to Allah. None of them understood except Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. It is enough of an excellence for him. That six from the ten who are granted paradise. They accepted Islam through him. Through his da'wah. Abdurrahman bin Awf. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. Uthman bin Affan. Tolha, Az-Zubair, all of them accepted Islam through him. Now you tell me what kind of actions he has. You tell me what kind of actions he has. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he gave everything for Allah. He gave everything. That's why Allah gave him everything he wanted. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, no one, no one has spent his wealth and given himself more than Abu Bakr. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everyone who has done something to me, I have given back his favor, except Abu Bakr. Only Allah will reward him. And he is the one Allah mentioned him. وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى When Allah said, فَأَنذَرْتُكُمْ نَارًا تَلَظَّى I warn you of a fire which is hell, the fire of hell which is burning.
Then Allah said after, وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى They are people who are going to be saved from the hellfire. Those who are pious. الَّذِي أُتِمَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى He used to give his wealth to purify his soul. And he used to give not to earn anything from anyone. إِلَّا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعَلَى Except to seek the favor of his Lord. That is Abu Bakr, رضي الله عنه. Umar رضي الله عنه. When one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the people, Tasaddaqu, give. Give for the sake of Allah. He said, Al-Yawm, in sabaqtu Abu Bakr, in fahuwa yawm. If there's any day which I am going to do better than Abu Bakr, it is today. So Umar رضي الله عنه, he brought his donation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Ma abqayta li ahlik, what did you leave for your family? فَقَالَ مِثْلُهُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I left just like that, meaning he brought half of his wealth. Half of his wealth he gave for the sake of Allah. And then he said to Umar, waiting to see what would Abu Bakr bring. He said, فَأَتَى أَبَا بَكْرٍ بِمَالِهِ Then Abu Bakr he brought his wealth. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, What did you leave for your family? قَالَ أَبْقَيْتُ لَهُمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ I left for them Allah and his messenger. This is all my wealth. And Umar he said, Wallahi, from that day I knew I can never compete with him. Everyone should ask himself here. How much have you given for Islam? And I just don't mean given in money. How much effort have you done for Islam? How much time do you put for your deen, yourself, just to help yourself and your family? Ask yourself that question. Then you know the difference between us and them. They did not just reach that level because of sitting. There used to be people, Ubad, people of Ibadah, people who gave up everything for the sake of his deen. In the Sahih of Man Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, one day he's sitting with his Sahaba again and he said, Man asbaha minkum al swa'iman. Who amongst you today is fasting? Fakala Abu Bakr Anna, he said, Me, Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked, Man at'ama minkum al yawma miskinan? Who amongst you today gave food to the poor? Abu Bakr said, Ana ya Rasulallah, me. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked, Man atba'a minkum al yawma janazatan? Who amongst you today went to the funeral of his Muslim brother? Faqala Abu Bakr, Ana ya Rasulallah, me. Thumma sa'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man a'ada minkum al yawma maridan? Who amongst you today visited the sick? Abu Bakr said, Ana ya Rasulallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, illa These things, they don't combine on someone except that he has entered Jannah. But it is very sad, and I'll be very realistic. Very realistic. Maybe harsh. We pray our five prayers and we think, oh, mashallah, we are the best Muslims. وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Allah says, let those who compete, compete. This is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ In another hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says, مَنْ أَنْفَقَ زَوْجَيْنِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ دُعِيَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ هَذَا خَيْرٌ Whoever gives something, a couple, Meaning if you give one car, you give two. You give something in a couple. Two. Same things in a couple. Whoever gives two things, similar things, for the sake of Allah, he is called from the door of Jannah. O slave of Allah, this is good. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهَلِ الصَّدَقَى دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الصَّدَقَ Whoever is from the people of Sadaqah, he'll be called from the people of Sadaqah. From the gates of Sadaqah of Jannah. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجِهَادِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الْجِهَادِ Whoever was someone in jihad, he'll be called from the door of jihad. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصَّلَاةِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الصَّلَاةِ Whoever was used to be someone who prays a lot, he'll be called from the doors of salah. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصِّيَامِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الرَّيَّانِ And whoever used to fast a lot, he'll be called from the door which is called rayyan, the paradise of rayyan. So Abu Bakr he said, Ya Rasulullah, ما من أحد يدعى من أحد من تلك الأبواب له من ضرورة. 
Anyone who's called from any of those doors, he has no problem. He's going to Jan, and it is true. Like in look at the himma, look at the zeal which he had for ibadah. He asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Wahal min ahdin yud'a min tilka al-abwaab kulliha." Is there going to be anyone who will be called from all of those doors? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Naam, wa arju an takuna minhum, and you will be inshaAllah one of them." And he doesn't just have any paradise. Abu Bakr doesn't have just any paradise. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "Inna ahla darajat al-ula, the people who have the highest of Jannah, la yarahum man tahtahum kama tarauna al najmu al tawli fi ufuq al sama." Those people with the highest degrees, those who are in Jannah also, but lower than them. They will see them just like how you see the shining star up there in the in the sky. Wa inna Abu Bakr and Umar minhum wa anama and Abu Bakr and Umar are from those people up there. In fact, they have better than that. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. أقول ما تسمعون أستغفر الله لكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم والبر الكريم. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه he says كنا نخير بين كنا نخير بين أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فنقول أبو بكر ثم عمر ثم عثمان ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسمع ذلك ولم ينكر علينا. We used to say the best is Abu Bakr and then Umar and then Uthman and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would hear us saying that he would not say anything. He would not say anything. And Muhammad bin al-Hanafi as in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, "سأل تو أبي I asked my father Ali ibn Abi Talib." أي الناس خير بعد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ who's the best person after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ فقال سعيد بن أبي طالب يصير أبو بكر. it is Abu Bakr. قلت ثم من؟ I said then who؟ قال عمر. he said it is Umar. the صحابة they knew this. everyone knew this. it was very clear. it was very clear. أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه. It is enough of an excellence that he is the father-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The main lesson we get, because if I continue, will take a long time. The main lesson we get, ya ikhwan, you have to put effort in your religion. You have to give what you can, and I say again, just just not wealth. Put in your time. Put in your effort, in your deen, because the benefit comes back to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about the true believers. Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'minina, Allah has bought from the believers their souls and their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa min al nasi man yashri nafsahu bdigha'a marbati Allah. And from the people are those who have given their souls for Allah, to seek the pleasure of Allah. Like we said last week, what is the ultimate goal? Why are you here right now? Why do you pray? Why do you fast? Why do you stay away from all the haram to earn the pleasure of Allah? These are the people who earned that already. We have to emulate them and to copy them. And the least we do is to love them in our hearts, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will join us with them, even though our actions are not like theirs. Aqim as-salam.